I'm going to skip forward to the section where he writes on the liturgy. Now remember, this is a Catholic priest writing this, and I'm going to quote extensively because it indicates what would happen later with liturgical renewal. And I begin quoting here. Efforts towards simplicity and away from unreality in the church's devotional life have been attempted by many modernists in the last two centuries, but both the efforts and the authors of them have gone the way of all reform and all reformers. The Synod of Pistoia pleaded for worship in the vernacular and was condemned. Rather than allow the faithful that direct cooperation in divine worship which the early Christians enjoyed and which gives to Protestant services so much attractiveness and sincerity, the papacy compels them to be mere spectators at a show. The priest is as aloof from Catholic congregations in the acts of his ministry as were the pagan priests from theirs. The instinctive need of genuine worship to express itself in words is held in check. The very understanding of the prayers and petitions at the altar is either obscured or destroyed by the use of an ancient language. And if the function is solemn, the sentiment of worship is itself annihilated by incensings, marchings, and a puzzling perplexity of maneuverings. In certain ceremonies, a pontifical mass, the dedication of a church, the baptizing of a bell, the blessing of oils, and some others, what with the grotesque vestments, the senseless sprinklings, the unintelligible chanting, the putting on and taking off of hats, the kissing of rings and thuribles and cruets, it is impossible to be devout, and most assuredly it is impossible to discern anything of the spirit of the New Testament. Yet to every plea for sincerity, reality, and truth in the great matter of common worship, Rome turns a scornful an angry face. A Cardinal Manning may implore Catholics to stop chanting litanies and chattering rosaries lest they scandalize Protestants. A Bishop Bonamelli may protest against the sickening vulgarity of picturing and worshiping Christ's physical heart. Other earnest men may speak out against such blasphemous nonsense as Sweetheart of Mary, Be My Salvation, or such orgies of superstition as the devotion to St. Anthony, but all in vain. Fostered and encouraged by a papacy whose tenure of existence depends upon externalism and perishes with growing personality, these excesses and degradations of religion are secure beyond any power of reformer or modernist to destroy them. So he's just really bashing his own mass and I'm wondering why he even entered the priesthood, if not to destroy the priesthood from within.